and welcome to any new persons who came in afterwards. Um, please help me welcome Reverend Sonia, that little body of wisdom, <laughs> to the podium. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And I also remember that we include those on this eight World Wide Web. It's a lovely, lovely, cool day. And I'm glad I'm living in Jamaica right now. <laughs> I should say that it is my great pleasure to share the platform with Reverend Anne. And it is my great privilege to be addressing you this morning. He says I must stand up straight. <laughs> I'm standing very straight. <laughs> yes, I, as Reverend Anne said, I know that you made the extra effort to be here this morning, and we are grateful that you are here. And we know that you have come with an open heart to share your consciousness. And I know that in that consciousness, whatever you need to know, to hear, to understand, to be, and to feel has already been ordained. I'm so grateful to Sandra for choosing to have that workshop. Yes, that workshop that she has decided on having because I can remember many moons ago when I was first introduced to this goal setting workshop. I would set my goals, put it in an envelope, seal the envelope and forget about it until the next year. Not realizing how important it is to prime the pump as we go along. Yes, there we, I did get some demonstrations, but I'm absolutely certain that the way to go about it, having decided on the path that we will take, we will, as my, the title of my talk says, stay on the high road, enjoy the ride. Stay on the high road, enjoy the ride. Most of us, if not all of us here this morning, have completed an exercise of goal setting for our desires for the new year 2018. Reverend John took us through what was an inspiring and definitive experience. How many of us were here? Let's see. Wow, is it a little rain that scared you away? Okay, it was great. It really was great, but I'm sure the consciousness that was generated would have benefited you anyway. You know, it's a liberating feeling to know that we can choose and that these choices are honored at the point of our choosing. So we are ready to embrace and experience those of us who have set our goals. Whether you are here or not, I know you have set your goals. We are ready to experience our good. Yes? Good. The year is young. But I know that some people are already noticing the evidence of change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is all good. <laughs> For others, just the thrill of anticipating the change is enough for the moment. I hope we have all been bold and extravagant in our choices. I say bold and extravagant only in comparison to what we are currently experiencing and not by way of limitation. There is nothing too great for us to receive, nothing. This time around, this time, this year, we have extended the boundaries of our consciousness to imagine greater and greater possibilities for ourselves, <coughs> the people we know and love, humanity in general, and the beautiful vehicle that takes us round and round, planet Earth. The very idea of what we have set out to reveal causes me to tingle with anticipation, really tingle. 
Setting goals reminds me so much of many road trips that I have made throughout my life. You see, before we set out on any journey, we choose where we want to go. We don't just drive. Although I must say that when I was a child, my father would set out in the direction of Montego Bay, not knowing where he would end up. And we would just drive for the, just for the sake of the journey, just to be together. Yes, so we can do that. But most of us, when we set out on a journey, we know where we are going. We know the mode of transportation. Are we taking a bus? Are we going by car? Will we be the driver? Or will we be driven? All of those decisions are taken, and many more. We are going to prepare the vehicle. Almost, I'm sure none of you jump into a car and just drive it out, checking to see if you have gas and if, you know, checking your engine and so on. So we prepare the vehicle, right? Very important, too, is the route we will take. There are some places that we go to, there's absolutely no choice as to where, what route we'll take. There's one road going there, right? Airport. Eh? Airport road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man, you can take the ferry or you can swim if you can swim. <laughs> no ferry, ferry anymore? Oh, okay. I have to see, I have to do something about that. <laughs> so, you know, when we choose where we are going, we, we don't have to imagine that it exists. We know it exists. Just like when we set our goals, we know that what we have chosen exists. We may not be seeing it at the moment, but nobody would choose a goal unless we, we knew that it existed and that we are on our way towards it. I know that in our teaching we say once, and it is true, once we have set our goal and our intention, we know that it is already there. So sometimes, when you're young in this teaching, you say, well, if it is there, why doesn't it come forth? I want it today, tomorrow, right? But everything in nature has a process that it goes through in order to reveal itself. Eh? When people get pregnant, they don't expect the baby to come tomorrow, right? We know and we don't get anxious. And I mention this because sometimes the anxiety and the impatience is what delays what is a natural process where we could really get the baby tomorrow, right? The baby of our goals. And so there's one particular journey that stands out in my mind because, primarily because I've taken that journey so often. That is the route between Otrius and Kingston and vice versa, right? I have been taking that route for good almost 73 years, right? I'm sure it's almost 73 years. I, I don't remember the, the early ones, journeys, but I know that we have been taking it. I've been taking it from the time when we used to have cars that you wind up, right? You know, nobody, what your man, we have to wind, crank up the car, and it go juku, 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 juku. <laughs> and then you wait, right? And then it start to pop up across and everybody jump in, right? Yes, yes, cars were like that, right? So, but more important, but we prepared it still, you know, just like how we prepared the car. No, we prepared the car then. It was a longer preparation, though, and a lot of faith went into <laughs> it as well, right? No, this journey, I'm telling you, it used to be one which was, would take four hours that if you're lucky, right? Four hours from Ocherius to Kingston, believe it or not. And the road was very narrow and grass and things were growing, you know, projecting into the road. And of course, you know, we had to wind round and round and round all the different roads we had to wind around to get to Kingston. But guess what? We had a wonderful time because the entire family was there and we would talk and we would sing. 
I actually made that journey once in the back of a truck. We were coming to um, a, a festival. I think they used to call it Ice Tedford, and it was a whole entire school. And it was one of the most lovely journeys that we have had. Yeah. Right? No, Hilda's. Oh, no. <laughs> Prairie Elementary School. <laughs> oh, no. But they, we were on, we, that was our high road. We didn't have a highway. It was our high road. And the high road was our consciousness. We just had a good time. We sang every song we could think of all around us, everything. And it was wonderful. But the journey was unpredictable. And sometimes we would end up getting to Flatbridge, all of a sudden to know that Flatbridge was down, right? Flatbridge was a different kind of bridge from the one that is there now, right? And some people know that when Flatbridge is down, we would be warned, we'd get warning, and we'd have to drive up in the hill somewhere else. Yes, that is some of that experience is how we set out on our journey of goal setting even now. We set out with one certainty we know what we want and we know that we're going to get there, right? It may take a little longer, but guess what? Enjoy the communion that you're having with spirit and the little evidence that we are really growing and moving in that direction. Then, Guess what now? The journey sort of settled down and we got a little better road. But, and we got a better bridge, right? But sometimes when you get to the bridge, we have to stop because two vehicles stop and nobody wants to move. Or somebody has decided to go swim in, in their cars over the, into the rear cobra. But the thing that is the most un unpredictable along the journey is sometimes when we are on that road, what do you call that? I've forgotten the name of the road now. The hill, right? No, it's like a bit. Mount, Mount Russell. Sometimes you meet up, you think, oh, you're going well, I'm going to reach Kingston quickly. And then you meet a car, a big truck or a trailer that has, is across the road, right? And then a whole line of cars start to pile up. And then now there is argument and there is always somebody who will decide that they are going to come and, and tell people what to do and how they must move. And there's always a leader that jumps out, right? And also telling you what you must do with your car. Your life, don't you remember some of those things? Some people deliberately or accidentally, right, get in your path and then they're telling you, how you should proceed, right? But one of the things I remember best about it is after a while when there are enough cars, people, everybody gets out, right? People start getting out and the driver's getting out and before you know it, people are talking to each other as if they have known each other all their life. You ever seen that yet? <laughs> so very often when things happen along the road and things might be, seem negative to you, Right? You may actually meet people along the road who have decided, well, I'm going to make the best of it and bond together in what is an experience. Bonding along life's path in experiences that would have been uncomfortable is great. I will never forget, this is not the journey, but as I'm speaking to you, I remember Gilbert. Those of you who are in here with Gilbert, Gilbert was a great leavener, right? <laughs> and everybody had light, they had water, didn't have ice, and everybody would gather together in the various places and just commune with each other. It was so wonderful. So our life's journey is like that. If we have decided where we are going, with our goals and in life, no matter what you meet along the road, you have already decreed it good. Don't necessarily wait until you get into the experience, right? Because you may get, you know, a little carried away, but decree it good every day. Every morning that I wake up, I am so grateful for this miracle we call life, and it is a miracle. If you don't believe me, go and read up about the human body. Read up about it is a miracle. And every time I sit before I work, 
I again give thanks for this wonderful, wonderful miracle and this adventure we call life. And we say we can choose, just like we have chosen our goals for a time period because it's convenient and it, it you know, man has, is man that decide on this thing about time, you know, there is really no time in, in, in the universal experience, but we, 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 we divide up things into time so that we can focus in short term on it. And we can choose just as we choose how we will experience the goals of this year. We can choose how we'll experience everything that comes up, even the things that we did not set as goals, because we have set the most important goal for life. Let go and let God, and know with certainty, right? I let go and let God. Let's say it together. I let go and let God. And since we know what God is, who God is, in that letting go, we know that whatever comes, it must be good and very good. Very good, very good. So we choose. We choose. And you know, one of the things that I like to say to remind myself of the God presence and my relationship is an affirmation which, as you know, it must come from Dr. Ernest Holmes. It simply says, I am a center in the divine mind, a point of God conscious life, truth, and action. I am a center in the divine mind. I place myself in it. And we know that I am in it, and it is in me. So there is no escaping. I am there. And I live in the spirit of truth. And I'm conscious that the spirit of truth lives in me. I am a center in the divine mind, a point of God conscious life, truth, and action. You know, we have, having set our goals, been willing, as I said, to let go and let God. But yes, I know if we are honest, sometimes having let go and let God. And I say this reminds me of my first early attempts to swim. I know that the water will hold me up, you know, that is what they say. But when I go into the water, I don't let go. I'm thrashing around like anything. Why? Because there is a biological alarm system in me, which is fear. Yeah, fear is fine, you know. Fear is fine to a point because it alerts us of potential threats that we should avoid or confront. It will be some time it will take some time after this alarm has been set off initially. But after we've been in this teaching long enough, as soon as it comes, we confront it. And we, we don't suppress it, no. Because if you suppress it, it goes down there and it's out of sight. But it's working. We shut it off right away by confronting it with a let go and let God. Or whatever works for you, whatever works for you. Fear is not to be feared. It is to be acknowledged as a biological gift, but it is not something that we are supposed to hug up and stay with any more than when we get the urge to go to the bathroom. We don't sit there and contemplate it. We go, right? We go. I hope we go. All right. <laughs> no doubt is fear, you know, but it kind of sneaky. Is it sort of muted? Is muted. So it might get away. It might actually sneak up on us and we don't even realize that it is happening. So this is why it's so important to turn on the lights. Turn on the light and be prepared. Turn on the light. The light is what we know of God. And therefore, we need to be well practiced in the presence of God. We need to take the time to be still. So many of us 
we are very, you know, we, we, we keep up our spiritual practice, but there's one important thing that we miss. We either pray, which means we're talking, right? We might meditate, which is pretty active. Some people don't believe that, but it is, right? Or we are church, we are celebrating and worshiping the presence um, within us, but we do not spend enough time just sitting still. That is my favorite admonition. Be still so that you can know the I am, right? Be still. There's nothing wrong with us being still, doing nothing, right? Just be still. Let your thoughts do what it wants to do. Don't try to relax because you can't do it that way. Just allow things to happen. This is a spiritual and mental dusting out so that the spiritual process can take place through you. Try it. Do not, all kind of thoughts are going to come to you. And you're going to remember like the stove, you wonder if you're, you, know, you turn off the stove, you see that person, all kind of things. Some of the things you don't want to see. In fact, most of the things are the things you don't want to see that comes up then. But it comes up with a good reason. It comes up to pass, to leave you, right? So guess what? This is how, when we're finished with that now, we turn our attention to the light. We turn our attention to the light and the doubts will fade or it won't even come up. Of course, we pray, we affirm, we meditate. Now there are two emotions which I promise you. Never see the light of day in my mind and I invite you to do the same. They are regret and guilt. Regret is pointless at best and it is slowly but steadily corrosive regret. It is pointless because it is impossible to reach into the past, it's gone already. So it happened already. So what are you going to do about it? Why is it corrosive? Because it depletes our spiritual energy. It does. And the same with guilt. Nobody, I promise you, nobody does anything to deliberately harm or hurt themselves or anyone else unless at that time they had a knee-jerk reaction where they didn't think about it or they thought they were doing the right thing. In any case, whatever you think about that, you may or may not believe me, but whatever you think about that, guess what? It don't make no sense, right? So let it go, let it go. My granddaughter likes to sing, let it go, let it go. <laughs> and I hear it, that's what all children that age like to sing, let it go, let it go. It's about a thing called Frozen, no? Yeah, yeah, I'm a lot of tired of hearing this Frozen over and over, but I like the let it go part of it. So clean up, right, the mental programming. And there's another affirmation from Ernest Holmes, all suggestion of age, poverty, limitation, or unhappiness is uprooted from my mind and cannot gain entrance to my thought. It can't gain entrance. Remember I told you, I'm not taking it, right? It has to stay away, right? Just like I say, and, and most of the time it works, or almost all the time, I say no self-respecting germ will live in this body, right? <laughs> and no, it nearly catch me though the other day, but I just, I, I affirmed it away promptly. And there's a simple prayer from Diane Harmony, who wrote a book that Reverend and I taught. I like it because it's one-liners. You know, sometimes we pray, right? Ministers and practitioners, and we pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. But uh, that long prayer is not any more effective than, um, than a short prayer. No. But we just enjoy ourselves. You know, when we get down into it and feel nice, we don't want to come out, right? But the, this simple, sometimes I hear you don't even hear some of us, right? Not guilty. <laughs> 
and listen to it and see if you can recognize the steps. If you don't recognize the steps, you have to come to class, right? There is only one power in the universe, and I name it God. The God that is within the stars, moon, and sun, and all of humanhood is within me. Yes, OK. Realizing that all that God has is mine, I know that. And then you put in what you want. Perfect health, anything that you want. You can put in, you can use it to, and put in your goals for this year, right? I am grateful that I am, and usually it falls into the category like where I am, the wellness, peace, abundance, wisdom of the divine, or any of those that you are, you are affirming, doing an affirmative prayer for. We, we prefer that you don't pray for everything in one prayer, right? You need to keep a laser beam focus, right? So uh, it, nothing is wrong if you play four or five prayers and it's all right, you have the time, right? The eternity is yours. But it's better to separate. If you're, if you're affirming of health, then you do health. If you're affirming of prosperity, you do that, right? Whatever your goals are, take out your goals one by one and match them into these one-liners. And then I release this prayer and know that it is so. Practice one-liners, right? One-line prayers, right? Yes? Yeah? This is 10 line. No, you know, surprisingly. There's one power, right? That power um, is God. And whatever God has is mine. And therefore, I know. And then this is the third step, right? And continue, right? And you release it. Mm, it's so long, eh? But it's not. Mm -mm. Well, you do your shorter one. I like the one which says, yes. I like the one which says, right? God is, I am, therefore, thank you, Father. And so it is, right? Sometimes you might have to do that, you know, like a quick one when you're out there on the street and you're driving on your car and, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> you want to repeat. Right? God is, I am, therefore, Thank you, Father. And so it is. Right? The thank you, Father, is a kind of a release, right? Thanksgiving and releasing one. Right? Quick, 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 quick. You know, why can we say and do all those things? Because the power and authority of God is within us. It is within us. And there's another journey that captures my attention. It is a journey of Saul, who became Saint Paul. Paul, right? Because some of us, you know, all of us, we, 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 when we grab on to a goal that we want, right? Sometimes we don't stop to ask ourselves, you know, what is it we're really, really, really looking for, right? Or is this goal something that when I get it, I'm going to be any happier than, than when I, than I am now? I know a, a few, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but I know a few people that the goal is, listen to me, I want my US visa. I want to go to United States. I want to experience it. I want to experience snow, right? Or whatever they want to experience there. What are you looking for? Is it adventure? Is it whatever it is? Always trace your goals back to what you want to feel. No, dear Saul, very, very, um, what you call it, passionate man, and I hear he was a Pharisee, right? He was obviously not thinking clearly what he wanted to do. What he wanted to feel, he was thinking what he wanted to do. And he was busily going to root out all the people who followed Jesus he could find everywhere. It must have given him a high and a sense of power and authority. And that was his goal, obviously, find them, carry them back to the Jerusalem and have them sorted out, right? And so he was very valuable and, and obviously felt very authoritative. 
And, but yes, as we all know the story, you know the story, right? Well, scientists have different opinions as to what happened, but we'll take the biblical thing that as he was going there, a big flash of light hit him and he could not see. For three days he couldn't see. They had to lead him back, right, to his, I think it was Jerusalem, right? They had to lead him. He had to be led back. Three, he couldn't see with his physical eyes. But something was happening to his spiritual eyes. So when, that is when we set our goals. We have to take our eyes off the thing and go within and feel the feeling that we ought to feel when we get the thing that we think we want, right? That is what happened to him, right? So you know the rest of it is that, you know what he said? After that experience, of course, he, the, the, he heard this voice that said, um, yes, he said, I am Jesus who you persecuted, right? And then he had a communion. Jesus, we know, is a Christ to us, within us, right? And so this is a metaphor for how we need to proceed with some of our, our goals. And what happened? That same feeling that he wanted to have, he was able to manifest it in a way that helped the biggest, helped to form the largest religion currently. I didn't know that. I thought it was Muslim. Christianity is the largest religion and how so many people have benefited since then. Take your goals. Go within. Still the picture that you have. Yeah, we have done the picture part of it and that's fine. That was good that Saul was able to do that. It gave him the passion and the, the longing and the thirst and the hunger for it. But make sure that you spend as much time feeling the feeling that you're after. And if you don't know what that feeling is, go into the quiet and ask, what am I looking for? Right? Yes. No, no. <laughs> you, the Christ, the Christ. We are looking for the Christ, right? So take another look at St. Paul's um, evolution. Because he said he used to listen to people. That was the reason why he went. He used to take his teaching from other people. And after he had that revelation, he listened to himself, the self within. Now, friends, that journey that we undertake every day Repeated. There's many, many journeys, you know, but there's one journey that takes us into eternity. And every point in eternity is precious time that has been given to us to grow towards Christhood, to grow to that point where easily, effortlessly, joyfully, spontaneously, and with great fulfillment, everything falls into place so that every day when we wake up we step out in certainty and in confidence that this is a good day because it is God's day everything that is required for us to create out of that consciousness which is within us has already been there. Someone said each person was born with a divine print written in the soul. Each person was born with a divine imprint. All we have to do is allow it to come forth. I am still amazed at what my computer can do. And my smartphone, which I am trying to get as smart as it is, right, can do. Right? If that can happen, can you imagine the infinite possibility that lies within us? The divine imprint which says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the world, earth. Go, embrace your good. You deserve it. And know for every goal you have declared that every step you take, every move you make, Every single day, every time you pray, 
The universe is lifting you. You are on your way up higher and higher and higher. Stay on the high road. Stay on the highway and enjoy the journey. God is the drive and the courage. <coughs> Godward is the journey. Be happy, be well, be prosperous, for you are filled with perfect light. Namaste. Yeah.